All right, welcome back to another video. How did this one already get a view? I just released this Angular Setters and Getters video um, about five minutes ago, and this is part two of that, where we're going to filter some data from our table and Angular material. Silly me, I went off and started doing other things and I deleted all my code with the table, so I had to recreate it. And here's basically what we have so far. I have an input, I have a table. We're using that same fake data from my Angular Material table video, and we're just displaying it like this. There's, there's no pagination or anything. It's all on one, there should be 200 entries, I believe. It should be all on one page. And that's pretty much where we are. And I guess to better know what I'm doing here, I recommend watching this Angular Setters and Getters. Like I said, that's part one, I guess, of this little two-part series of filtering data. One way to do it, at least, with your Angular Material Table. And also the Angular Material Table video I also made. So check those out if you haven't already. If you're confused, those should help you realize what's going on. And I feel like this kind of stuff, I'm always trying to constantly learn and then hopefully share it with you so that you learn and if you like this, don't forget to hit subscribe. We're getting close to a thousand, which is like my current ultimate goal right now. And we're cruising to it real quick. Really appreciate it. And without further ado, let's just look at what we have so far. So not much to look at here on the HTML app component. Um, it's just the basic Angular material table setup. And then, like I said, we have this input, which is data bound to a filter property in our app component. And what I ended up doing, if you remember from the setters and getters video, if you ended up watching that, we had this name sentence. I just changed the name from sentence to filter. And this is also going to show why these setters and getters can be useful and how we're going to use them to um, filter our data in the table. So maybe I should explain what it is I'm trying to do. So what I wanna do is I wanna filter by title. And as I start typing, and you can see it's, it's logging it here, as we uh, set up in the last video with the setter, as I'm starting to type, it will filter by title each time I add a character to this input. And believe it or not, this is actually pretty quick in my opinion. I did this with one of my work projects and I have like 9,000 rows in my table. And doing a filter like this, I thought it would like lag it a little bit or maybe it would take a few seconds to filter it but it actually did it like at the snap of a finger, so it's kind of nice. And so I want to implement the same thing here, right? If I type DEL, we should get this one and any other row with DEL in the title. And as I keep typing, we keep filtering as we go. So like I said, this is just one way that I decided to do this. You can think of maybe other ways to do this, but this is how I did it with my own project. I thought I would share it with you guys. So we have our data, which is a to-do array, but I'm also going to make another to do array data type property, and it's going to be named filtered data. And I'll show you why here in a second. Hopefully it makes sense. So what I'm going to end up doing in the constructor here is not only is this dot data going to equal X where it calls the API and gets all the data. I'm also going to say this dot filtered data is going to be equal to X as well. So think of data, this dot data, this to do array, as all of the data that comes in with this API call. And then filter data is just that. It's going to be, as we start filtering it, we'll look at data, we'll say, hey, in this data, which is all of the data, give me just some of the data that meets this criteria, and then we'll set filter data equal to that. So the idea is data will never change, but filter data will, and filter data is going to be built off the filtering of the data property here. I know that might sound a little convoluted, but as we build this out, I think it'll make more sense. So what I wanna do under this write log method, I also want to write a method called filter data, and we're going to pass in a filter, which is going to be of type string, and we're just going to return this dot data dot filter. We're going to use this filter, filter uh, method and then we're also going to use an arrow function. So the filter iterates through data here in this case, and each data item is a to-do item. Um, so I'm going to say X is the property name of type to-do because that's what data is, it's a to-do array. So each item in that array is to-do of type to-do. And then 
we're going to say x dot title dot includes this filter that we passed into this method. So it's basically what it's doing is it's going through each item in data. It's saying, hey, does this property, this title property, does it include the filter? Um, and if it does, add that to the return. And if it doesn't, we'll just forget about it. All right. And then lastly, in the setter, what I want to do is I want to say this dot filtered data is going to be equal to filter data, that method we just uh, created. And then we're going to pass in value, this value right here. We could also pass in underscore filter. Maybe that'll help clear things up or this dot underscore filter. So maybe I'll do that just for readability reasons. Okay, and lastly, we need to look at our material table. And instead of saying the data source is this data property, we then need to change it to say it's the filtered data property. And that's why in the constructor, I also set filter data equal to X, everything that was brought in initially, because off the bat, we wanna show all of the data in the material table. So I think this will work. I think I got everything here. Uh, maybe we should just recap. So we have two different to-do arrays. Both are set to all of the data at the very beginning. And then every time someone enters in that input text box a value, it runs through this setter. And part of this setter is running this filter data method that we created where we're passing in the value from the input text box and it's looking at the entirety of all of the data and asking, does the title of each item in that data include the filter? If so, make that part of the return. If not, just forget about it. And let's see um, if this now works. Everything saved, everything looks to be compiled successfully. Let's see if this works. Oh, not, what did I do? I set the wrong uh, thing. So we need to put it here. Filter data is the data source of the table, not the binding. And this one is just filter, right? Because that's the name of the setter. Yep. So now this should work. I was wondering why we got that funky text. So now if I put DEL, you can see how quick it is to filter out as we type. And then I can do E C T U S and then a space, an AUT, and then once we go that far along, we only get the very first one. And look, as I hit the backspace, um, it brings them all back as we delete characters. So now that I'm back to a clear input, and you can see <laughs> it goes through each time in the console, we're back to all 200 rows. So that's how quick it is uh, to filter. And it does it super quick, super smooth, I think it's a good user experience, and that is one way you can filter your table data with the Angular material table using those setters and getters that we set up in the previous video and talked about. So if you like this kind of stuff, yeah, don't forget to hit subscribe. Hopefully this helps you if you had the same question, and hope to see you in the next video.